Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Spider-Versity. This is the show where me, uh, DJ Wooldridge, and my co-host, Sal. Hey, Sal. Hi, Sal. Hey, what up? Uh, talk about Spider-Man. We are in Spider-Man, the animated se- series, season four. We've come so far. Uh, oh. And today we're talking about episodes one and two. And to do that, I thought, listen, new season. Uh, possibly, uh, maybe Sal and I are getting a little burnt out on Spider-Man the animated series. <laughs> yeah, now's a good time to to uh, have have a guest drop in, uh, introduce uh, season four. So my pal Johnny is stopping it. Johnny, tell tell the kids at home who you are and where they can find hey. you. Uh, I'm Johnny Two Cellos, as they call me on YouTube. Uh, that's where you can find me. YouTube. I mostly talk about cartoons, but I have uh, I've been doing some Spider-Man videos for about a year, uh, including like a 40 minute retrospective on this show. I watched this last year uh, and yeah, I got a lot of thoughts on this show. There's a lot I love and a lot I dislike about it. <laughs> and I got a lot of nostalgia, <laughs> tons of nostalgia for it. Tons so. of nostalgia. <laughs> yeah. I will say yeah. where, where Sal and I are at. So season four. I have season, what I've discovered going through it, season one, locked in. Season one, yeah, I remember really pretty good. much beat for beat. Now yep. we're at the point where I'm like, the nostalgia <laughs> has worn off because I don't know that I watched any of this. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I'm catching brand new stuff. I'm like, wow, I've never seen this one. And I understand why. I understand why. I was like, I am doing other things. Uh, oh, first off, who, dogs, who's, right. the, who's the guest? Who, who's visiting us on screen for those watching the video version? Oh, this is this is my, my dog, Ponyo. Oh, hello. Uh, she, she like as soon as I start doing anything uh, live, she likes to come visit. So Love it. hopefully, mm-hmm. hopefully she'll be good. But she'll probably just sit here and and try to get me to pet her while we're doing this. So big support, uh, big support, yeah. big supporter of, of Ponyo. Let me know if in. she needs if she yeah. needs to sign a release. I, I will. Know. I'll let you know. I'll let you know. <laughs> so um, you said what you like, what you don't like. Brief broad strokes, broad yes. strokes. Spider Man the animated series like don't like. Um. Okay, uh, <laughs> I think they do a lot of the the villain origins really great. Uh, I think they really like. I think they, for the most part, hone in on a lot of these a lot of these villains really effectively. Some of them less so. Like it was weird to me that they. You guys got into the vulture, right? Or yes. oh yeah, you, okay, yeah. It was, weird to me, oh, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was weird to me that they honed in on that specific little arc to be like his whole thing, mm-hmm. <laughs> like for the whole show. Um, yeah. And then obviously, there's a lot of like very funny censorship things with Morbius, and they focus on Morbius so much. Oh, we're getting we're season. gonna be getting back to Morbius. That's what, <laughs> oh, something yeah. to look forward to, kids, oh, in season yeah. four. So- <laughs> Somebody dared to mention his name in one of these episodes, and I was like, "No, don't bring him back." <laughs> I know he comes back, but I'm like, "Don't, don't yeah. do it, do don't it. do it." Um, but I and I do kind of like how like generally miserable they make Peter throughout this mm-hmm. show. Like he is just constantly going through it. It feels like every season they do something worse and worse. And this this beginning of this season is a good example because the last one you watched was just their their the loss of Mary Jane. Yes, right? that's yes, the yes, end that's of right. season three. And yeah, man, he's just like the number of episodes where he's swinging through the streets yelling "Mary Jane" yeah. is. It's just like it's like how, what I think about when I think about this show. Yeah. Naturally, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's something we're gonna. There will be a running theme for those tuning into Spider Versey for the next few episodes at least of opening with Spider Man just moaning about Mary Jane. <laughs> yes. Oh my God! I wish I had someone to talk to about this. <laughs> yes, I'm like they're yeah. called therapists. See, they're, they're, <laughs> they're, they're, they're at least a thousand in your neighborhood. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, also, before no, sorry, before we get going, I do want to take a brief. We just pour one out. I won't literally because there's a lot of technology around me. But let's pour one <laughs> out for Pantheon, which not only got uh, Johnny and I connected over Pantheon a little bit, and not only uh. did season two get unma- like we're, we made it, but we're not putting it out. But also, it's you can't so find annoying. season one now. In case you want to tell people, hey, check it out. Yeah. Maybe let's give it a second shot. Nope. Gone forever. So, so I fuck that. I guess season one is still on High Dive, which I've, is a service I've never used. Yeah, uh, for or now at least heard of until or, or this moment. Of, yeah. <laughs> um, so if you want to watch season one, you can check it out on High Dive. But they removed it completely from AMC Plus, and and allegedly season two is complete, and Ugh. they're just not going to release it. Um, which is a shame because the show is is so good. I'm hoping. I'm like holding out hope that some other service, because the show's made. Just says, oh, we'll buy the rights to both seasons and and air them. Yeah. Um, I feel like I feel like Amazon would be a good spot because they could they could promote it alongside like 
Invincible and Vox Mahina. It feels like there maybe would be some good crossover audience for drama action style animation there. Well, and yeah. for fans of Expanse, you'll know that Jeff Bezos loves to give second life to shows where people like him are clearly the bad guy. Like, like we're like, you can understand that you're not the hero in this story. Whatever. I love the show, so I'm not gonna complain. Yeah. yeah. Uh I I also kind of expect that even if it doesn't get saved, that like Somehow that second season's gonna get leaked. I do <laughs> maybe, right. Done. Somebody, somebody at the like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, at the executive level is gonna be like, "Whoops." Yeah, maybe yep. it's one of those. Maybe it's the last glimmers of optimism I have in me. But I have, or just what I have trouble believing. Like with stuff like Batgirl, like yeah, right. we're never gonna see it. I don't know that that yeah. happens yeah. anymore. No, no. Like someone will buy it or someone will release it. Like someone will leak it. The movie's coming. We're like, getting Batgirl uh, yeah. someday. Like there's episodes. There's infamously the second Doctor had of Doctor Who had episodes just van- because that's a thing that could happen. They were made. The yes. episodes were made of flammable film and they are just gone. But now <laughs> well, they, yeah, we they, live in the digital they, age. They see, Nothing goes yeah. away. <laughs> yeah. The, the BBC taped over the tapes of old <laughs> right. Doctor Who. That's how those got lost. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I feels like we're in this age where people are really obsessed with lost media. So like yeah. modern lost media doesn't feel like it can be a thing. I feel yeah. like someone's going to hack into some server and mm-hmm. track that stuff down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Please, well, yeah. listen, and that's... that's not even considering how like there are like at least a hundred people who worked on that sh- and that show movie, whatever that yeah. want to see people react to it yeah. and yeah. have a vested interest. I mean, like, you know, that remember that Deadpool test footage and it was like, yeah. There, there's rumors that Ryan Reynolds himself leaked that. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just, right. you know, anybody could have, an actor involved in Batgirl. But Brendan Fraser himself could be like, here you go. <laughs> here, here it is. Here it is. <laughs> Okay. All right. All right. All right. Well, if I, man, I would tell you all to go check out fucking Pantheon, but you can't right now. I guess on High Dive. <laughs> high Dive. High, go high find dive. it on High Dive. We're, it's worth it. Give it a shot. It's it, really good. It, it's it is very very good. And before we get into the show proper, I do. I almost forgot again. I cannot forget. I want to let you all know. Uh, February. Hellbent 3 is coming to Kickstarter. The third and final vo- volume of my Hellbent comic. It's nice. coming to Kickstarter in February. It is the conclusion of Jesse and Nick's story. Uh, they are trying to prevent the literal apocalypse. So if you want to find out, if you've been following along and you want to find out how that story ends, go to the pre-launch page at hellbentcomicbook.com. You can sign up the pre-launch page. Note uh, the second it goes live on Kickstarter. Also, if you haven't checked it out at all, you will be able to get volumes one and two with three. You'll be able to get all the whole saga. Each comic is 44 to 48 pages. A ton of story. Uh, it's super exciting. I think you're going to love it if you're a fan of Sandman, something that's killing the children, uh, crazy <laughs> comics like that. Go to hellbentcomicbook.com. Uh, check it out. Pre-launch page. Very excited to be able to conclude this story the way we in- initially intended. So please, please, please go check that out. There will be a link in the description. All that jazz. Now, Heck yeah. Spider-Man. Uh, starting with Season 4, Episode 1, Partners in Danger, Chapter 1. <gasps> Guilty. Uh, Original air date was in February 1st, 1997. The synopsis is Robbie is framed for a robbery and Spider-Man must prove he is innocent. Now, this is always fun because I always tend to watch these episodes uh, a couple days in advance. And what I forget is they're usually so chaotic that I have notes and I'm like, wait, wait a second. Where did we? I forget how one part connected to the other. So here we go. We begin with. Aunt Anna, Mary Jane's Aunt Anna, is in an insane asylum? Where, where, where <laughs> is Anna? She's institutionalized because she's just so angry at Peter. Uh, she hates yeah, Peter no, so much. That she institutionalized herself. Like, yeah. <laughs> she drove herself so, so angry even, that she went insane. Even before Mary Jane disappeared twice, she hated Peter she so hates much. Peter. <laughs> she yeah. hates him. And you know what? I get it. Like I, you know, I maybe <laughs> I to the now. level not great, but like you know, uh, I, Peter's relationship with MJ isn't the best. It's not. It's yeah. not the healthiest. He's no, flaky. Yeah. Nobody's is in this show because nobody knows how to actually like portray stable relationships. The yeah. only one that we actually could root for is Flash and Deborah Deborah Whitman. And Flash is a dunderhead who you find out like six months into their relationship, they're not even in a relationship at all. And yes. you're like, oh wait, he, we find out that he will the healthiest. <laughs> 
This is the cutest, healthiest relationship in the show, and they don't even know they're dating. Yes. Yeah. He will. We find out uh, in these episodes, I forget which one, that he will drop her at the earliest convenience. It's like, oh, cool, and, and, great. And, and, admittedly, I understand. I, I, you know, I don't appreciate it. Like, I, I, I you know, you don't support I, I, it, but you understand it. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. Flash I wouldn't do it quite so obviously. Yes. Yeah. 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 But- yeah. <laughs> Um, so, uh, well, we're not there yet, but I will get a lot of, a lot of people. I, I don't know that we have done the work here to establish Peter and MJ's relationship for him to be this upset, not necessarily this upset because the, the circumstances are upsetting, especially if you don't know the portal. We, as the audience know, she got sucked in the portal, which is bad. From which she will never return. Yeah. Peter thinks she drowned to death. So he right. <laughs> So I guess that's fair. You know what? I, I didn't think about that uh, too too hard while I was watching it. And like you, uh, this show is just just a nut, just just a famous bowl of nonsense mm-hmm. every episode. Yeah. And so I'm just kind of like, okay. Uh, so I tend to watch them the night before we do this show. Yeah, so yeah, I'm just yeah. like packing it all. I'm like, I because I need to remember all of it. Yes. And you're going to lose details anyway. And I, I, I did not think about how Peter's just like, He's actually pretty tame for how dead she he thinks she is. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, within context, but we just don't. It's just as a, as a kid's cartoon. It's just tough to be like every episode, like mm. especially when the show is like, "Hey, this person is the best love interest you've had in this entire series." You know what I mean? And then it's like, yeah, "No, yeah. Mary Jane." It's like, ah, whatever. Anyway, yeah, yeah. So once again, for the third, fourth, fifth time in this show, Peter's like, "I need to not be Spider Man anymore." Yes. <laughs> It's a very persistent thing in this show. He's constantly just like, "All right, time for me to call it quits." Yeah, <laughs> they, 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 yeah. He says every like other episode, like, "Time for me to quit again." <laughs> yep, yep, uh, yep. It reminds me a little bit. Listen, love Breaking Bad, all time great TV show. Uh, if you if you binge it, there's a lot where Jesse's like, "I need to get out," and it's like, uh, "Yeah, my dude, actually, you kind of fucking do." This is <laughs> that is a good call. Um, yeah. So uh, uh, JJ says, when I was a reporter, um, I would have solved the Watson disappearance by lunch. This is uh, so. So this episode, kind of a mixed bag in that we get a lot of JJ Gumshoe Detective, which is weird. Yeah. But also J- Jigsaw I, Jigs- feels like a favor. <laughs> J- Jigsaw Jameson, but. I was kind of lamenting the lack. We, it's been like, Sal, help me. It's been like two seasons that we got any good JJ. So JJ has been like bit parts, like cameo appearances. Like he'll show up and say like two things and then leave. Usually they're, they're lines they could have just ADR'd or used from another episode. Yes. yes. Right. Uh, this is like an actual episode about J or Jameson features heavily in it. And mm-hmm. he's, and he's being the supporting character he had been for the first two and a half seasons. Yes. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Now here we are, and he's Jigsaw Jameson, which does feel like a like a favor to somebody. Like, yes. <laughs> if we get to season four, we'll do your Jigsaw Jameson we'll do episode. Jigsaw. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, wait, yeah. but li- great Ed Hasner, great as always. <laughs> you, yep. I see what yeah. you, it's like one of the writers was like, it, every season is like, are we going to do the Jigsaw Jameson episode? It's like, <laughs> no, man. No, we're no, not. Man. We got to do another Morbius episode. <laughs> <laughs> we got to sell that Goblin Glider. We can't uh, We can't be selling J. Jonah Jameson. I, uh, I do. Figures. I do love the way every time someone recognizes him, though, they just go, Jigsaw J- Yes. <laughs> it's the best. And uh, <laughs> the timeline for which Jigsaw Jameson was doing it is nebulous <laughs> because we'll get to his like, main cop buddy is yep. easily half it's his like age. 25. <laughs> <laughs> yes, true, true. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's great is he's young. The cop is young. Yeah. But the woman that he tries to like muscle in on is clearly like older yeah you know like closer to his age so right. she aged but he did not yeah it's it's like a hollywood older woman which like yeah. so maybe like 40 you know what i mean like well she's, <laughs> she's as old as play a witch <laughs> yeah exactly old enough but not uh aunt may old all right not yeah no. we can't god forbid um oh yeah so um robbie is kidnapped and called mastermind during this heist um oh. Uh, and in what will prove to be an incredibly uh, convoluted plot that I do <laughs> actually think I have a lot of notes in here. They're like, why is this happening? And I actually, why? for once, I actually do think it kind of does come together. It's like, okay, that really? makes the, enough it's sense. A little, it's a long way to go yes, for yeah. that result, but it does 
track. <laughs> yeah, it, it tra- listen, it tracks more than some of the some of the the uh, plots we've been in. So the inherent logic of these people is very much consistent. Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 So uh, anyway, he's caught. He's arrested. All the herd surrender with him. They call him the mastermind. Uh, we get a courtroom scene where a lawyer is like, "Knockout gas. This is a court of law, not a Saturday morning cartoon <laughs> show." Wink, wink. But also, as we'll see, we exist in a reality where normal hoods have trapdoor secret layers. So I call <laughs> they, bullshit on you not believing yeah. in knockout gas. They literally yeah, they, they refer to ballistics in this episode. And I'm like, ballistics? <laughs> it's was all laser. lasers. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, uh, the only difference between this and reality is that bullets never existed. And it's all been laser technology. <laughs> what? Could you, could you imagine? We never invented bullets. We've only had lasers. What We've a better world lasers. this would be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. Yes. It is crazy how many like hydraulic restraining chairs are in this yes. universe. <laughs> Just everyone's got a button, everyone's got a chair. Seriously. Push that button, perfectly wraps around you. I have to imagine it's Oscorp. The- it's all Oscorp. Oscorp yeah, and Star Trek. Right. Tanks and, and, <laughs> right. and hydraulic chairs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, um, so uh, JJ's on the phone with the mayor. He's like, he's innocent mayor. I'd stake my reputation on him. The mayor hangs up with him. <laughs> uh, That's good joke. Yeah, good, good, good bit. Stuff. Yeah. Knowing Jameson's uh, uh, reputation, we're introduced to Ned Leeds, who amounts yes. Does that amount to anything in the show? I can't remember. I hope not. Yeah. Because, yeah. I, uh, in a way, it does. He, wasn't he? Wasn't he, yes. in the comics? Wasn't he a hobgoblin? Question mark. He was. He was like the the bad reveal for the hobgoblin. That was yeah. like not what the original hobgoblin author wanted Great. him to be. They like were. It was there was all this infight about it and they kind of use that to their advantage in their hobgoblin story in this show it's actually kind of effective i think how they use it so you'll see yeah yeah Uh, yeah yeah because it is a weird introduction yeah (laughs) because because we when yeah go sal oh just when this episode came out hobgoblin had been ned Leeds for 20 years like (laughs) right or whatever (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. as far as everyone associated with this show is concerned, Ned Leeds was the original Hobgoblin, and then Jason McIndale took over afterwards. It's, so it's weird like, that we introduced we did the our, McIndale thing now. Yeah, it's weird that we introduced our Hobgoblin red herring after we've already done the Hobgoblin reveal. It's like, you know, uh, whatever. What are you doing? <laughs> it's weird. Really weird. So we discover that, as with every plot behind the show, Kingpin is the one behind Robbie's incarceration. Um, he, unless we forget, as we've established in the Kingpin origin episode, he is a master hacker, and he he doesn't say it though. <laughs> he's a master of hacking. How do you think he got those muscles? And so he <laughs> he hacks into the prison system and gets Robbie transferred to Rooker's Island, which. Uh, I would have just stuck with Rikers, or I think in the comics it's Strikers. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm right. like, why is why why does everybody have to skillfully avoid saying Rikers Island? It's a real thing that really exists in real life. Do, do you have to pay royalty? Yeah, it's Rikers? a branding it's issue. Weird. Like, listen, you is have it to... register. Is it a registered trademark? <laughs> <laughs> probably listen i got a fucking when uh with my fam, my wife and i visited alcatraz in san francisco i got an alcatraz shirt so you know maybe we gotta sell that <laughs> yeah. merch we gotta sell that uh yeah. rikers merch uh, <laughs> i do think it's so funny that kingpin does all his hacking personally he's yes. like the richest dude on the planet he just does it himself yeah it's well because he's the best yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. the best yeah, yeah. No yeah he's the best is. yeah no one's better than him <laughs> so um we the the the, the, the um Get some sense to, to Rooker's. This is JJ decides he's going to be- investigate his jigsaw. Jameson. Meanwhile, uh, uh, Peter puts the largest spider tracker ever on Jameson's back. There's a shot where it's basically. <laughs> you can see it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, so that he can go track him. Um, JJ gets picked up by the same uh, shady uh, cabbie that picked up Robbie. And I should also mention that at this point. Peter was developing pictures that he took a Spider-Man from Robbie, Robbie firing the gun. Not sure he got the angle he got. Um, and it's clear that Robbie wasn't pulling the trigger. This feels like something he should have done while the trial was going on. Yeah, that's exactly what I wrote. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How, do you, how do you not do that before the trial? Yeah. yeah. How is that not part of discovery? How did his lawyers not contact you? Where's Matt Murdock? Where? Yeah, he left. Remember, he went to D.C. <laughs> He took his crazy old man voice and went to D.C. <laughs> Daredevil's like, me and my pal Matt are going to Washington, D.C. <laughs> um, 
All right, so JJ goes to this the beat cop friend Jimmy Mills, uh, who is in his twenties, who directs him to <laughs> Joey Nails, uh, which is where he talks to his sultry waitress Joey friends. Nails. And Joey yeah. Nails is the one that, even though he's just running like a backdoor casino, backroom casino kind of deal, has a whole secret layer setup going on with the chair, yeah. giant chair you were mentioning that straps JJ in. <laughs> Um, while Spidey's following him, he webs up these G.I. Joe villains. I don't remember if this is Kingpin's traditional henchmen or if this is a new They design. are not. Those are new. <laughs> yeah, they're We're new. Like, who are they? And they never come back up again. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be funny if they, like, I, I want to know the, like, the backstory of like who Kingpin is hiring, the secret of the goons. Where are they coming from? What organizations right? is he using? <laughs> I don't know. So, uh, the, 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 um, JJ is able to get himself out from fucking uh, Joey Nails, and everything uh, directs this warehouse where JJ runs across the GI Joe villains, and um, Spidey stops them, and, and then jo- Jonah pulls a gun on Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> he sure does. Now, did he find that gun in the like pile of other guns, or was that his gun personally? Because of course they're all laser pistols. They're all laser pistols. That's a great question. I don't remember how he got the gun. Was JJ packing right? this entire episode back from his... Listen, this was the gun he used 40 years ago when he was Jigsaw <laughs> Jameson. <laughs> yeah. So theoretically, it should have like run on Steam or something. <laughs> um, he's like, you want something done right? You have to do it yourself. <laughs> yeah. So, I do love how committed JJ is to just absolutely loathing Spidey. Like even after Spidey saves him, yeah. he's like, you, you're in on this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. we learned that once upon a time, a guy with a mask killed his wife, hit his wife with a car. Hit his wife with a car. Wait, did he kill? No. Did, it, did his wife die? Did we establish that? Or yeah. was she saved last yeah, minute she, or something? No, she's dead. She's dead. See, you can't trust people with masks is the right. moral of the story. Um, <laughs> Uh, worth mentioning that during the whole spot uh, part where Spider Man's fighting the goons, they accidentally activate like a bomb. Yeah, that's just like in the warehouse. They like it's hit it real hard, like and the place. countdown yeah. starts. Yeah, so yeah. Um, Spidey pulls JJ from the burning warehouse after the bomb goes off, and uh, they just stumble across. The, it's literally like set out the this like gun with like a remote control. Like, hey, by the way, here it is. Here it is. <laughs> in case you're wondering yep. how this was accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> I love it because it's in a it's in like a bear, you know, uh, storage area under the warehouse. There's nothing that links any of it to anybody. It's not like it's you know that in the script it was like they happen upon the lair of, mm-hmm. you know, the orchestrators of the crime yes. that were hired by the kingpin. There the maybe there's a couple of those spare suits that we saw Spider-Man fighting those guys in like hanging around and they're like yeah we need to repurpose so much stuff from yeah. the last three seasons none of that's in there yeah you're lucky if you're getting the gun yeah, yeah, the, yeah you're yeah. lucky you're getting the remote control with the gun yeah yeah, yeah. which is like it look the remote control looks kind of like an egg timer kind of a yeah. thing but we all know the most important thing with evidence from this complicated crime you're pulling is to keep it around for later just in case yeah. mm-hmm. you need it um and so they find it Spidey starts to put together that it's the kingpin behind it, and he hacks into the kingpin computer, and he's like, "I have to use every hacker's trick I ever learned to get into here." <laughs> like you've learned any? Yeah. All right. When? Um, because lest we forget, Spider-Man's a tracker too, or a hacker as well, and he types yeah. in the code progeny, which we learn is in relation to Richard Fisk, but I don't know how Peter figured that out. That. <laughs> he's just yeah. trying words yeah like, like it, letters it, it, he's going yeah. letter by letter <laughs> <laughs> p-r-o-g yeah like a, a real <laughs> hacker if you have you guys checked out the uh that new netflix show kaleidoscope not no. yet it's the Any one good? it's the one where it's like you're supposed to be able to watch it in any order or whatever and i was yeah. oh. Yeah, I was hearing mixed things, and I checked out an episode, and it's it's like this. It's like, uh oh, I'm gonna have to use every hacker trick in the book to get in here. <laughs> beep boop beep. The password is progeny. It's like, <laughs> that's it. Cool. Uh, so uh, we find out Robbie's prison roommate is Richard Fisk, uh, and we learn that he is there because Tombstone has been helping uh, Richard Fisk out in prison. So this is the favor. Hold on. Okay. 
So, yeah. so Tombstone's helped Richard Fisk in prison. As a favor to Tombstone, he orchestrated this plot. It's not good enough that we kill Robbie. It's not good enough that we discredit Robbie. We have to make Robbie look like a criminal mastermind. Get him sent <laughs> to this prison to question mark. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and, and, then to... there's, and then it falls apart. Yeah. He's like, we've got you here. Yeah. Now what? Now, now what, what do we do? Well, <laughs> and then they keep, and, and then he, like, he's like, no, we can't get away. It's, I'm so close. I'm like, to what? To what? Yeah. What are you going to accomplish? Are you going to, because, because it's one of those, like, I get, because that feels like uh, in line, it's, it's over the top, but everything the show is, I get that, like, okay, I want to discredit Robbie. That tracks. Yeah. That's a very tombstone. He's done that before. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But, just a lot of steps anyway doesn't matter uh, <laughs> intricate intricate it's it is intricate um so Tombstone's the master planner exactly and and this is where spider-man shows up which was not their plan but they act like they use it as a distraction we've established a, a crooked guard and yes. it's one of those things where, where they just escape they just get into a helicopter and escape and it's like why was it <laughs> this the that plan <laughs> yeah yeah like yeah if it was this easy, yeah, you could just go get Robbie. <laughs> yeah. Why? Why yeah. all the theater? That's a good point. <laughs> and also, weren't we? Wait, wasn't this Tombstone's the Tombstone's previous plan was to frame Robbie's son, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yes. Mm-hmm. He's really likes the framing stuff. He's the framing. Into, yeah. yeah. He's like, I'm going to discredit it. This is going to be great. Hold on, everybody. I listen. I know I have impenetrable skin and I'm super strong, but if my real gift. <laughs> yeah. Is framing people. Yeah. <laughs> he's just trying to prove that he's got a great mind, too. He's not all about the indestructible skin. Yeah. Like, right. Which I do yeah, think right. I actually like that angle on Tombstone, which is which is explored very well in Spectacular Spider-Man, which was yeah, due to the true. fact that they couldn't use Kingpin. But still, I liked it. <laughs> I liked it. Yeah, they really they really took advantage of using Tombstone in that role, though. He's great. In that yeah. Show. Well, yeah. Keith David. Ah, uh, yeah. so yeah. good. Um, anyway. Classic. So Spider Man's fighting prison guards for wait, yeah, why is Spider Man breaking into prison? Why why why, why is he I love it? that he just tears it up. He like really leans into the vigilante thing in this episode where he's like, I'm in pr- I break into prison. Yeah. I literally attack the guards. <laughs> I kick all their asses. I destroy public property. Yeah. And then <laughs> I steal like an escaped convict. Yes. Like, wh- what are you doing? In for, like, in for any penny, Jane. in for pound. Yeah, we're gonna yeah. we're 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 going we're gonna do it. This so, is a guy who's never gonna reveal his identity. He's like, no, nope, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> so um, we get we get a couple things that we get something the show has enjoyed in the past, and we get something they've set up that they really love this season. So the first thing is <laughs> helicopter fights. This show loves helicopter fights. Any excuse to get a helicopter fight, helicopter fights and sewer <laughs> fights. That's where we shine. <laughs> Yeah, um, the fact that it's because we have that footage already established yep. and we can use it. <laughs> yes, over, over and over and over. I think over I know again. exactly what you're going to suggest. What you're going to say is the new is the new hotness. For the this new season. hotness this season. I think it is used every. The only thing that repeats every episode, every episode is him bitching about Mary Jane and and him yep. using a web parachute. This is his web new parachute. trick. Web parachutes. Yes, I wrote. Uh, I love the web parachutes. That's some. That's some incredible web craftsmanship. I don't yep. know how yeah. he does it. Nope. Yeah. And. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> My question is, was there a web parachuting Spider-Man action figure released that year? Was that the idea? Oh, hold on. Hold on. Make sure that no yeah, fewer than three up. or four episodes, he has to have a web parachute. Because listen, in the <laughs> comics, he does have web. He makes web parachutes. Yes. In one of the episodes, I love it because he's falling. He's got no buildings. And he goes, I hope this works. And he makes the web parachute for the first right. time. And I'm like, fine. But then in every episode in this sequence we watched, he has one to seemingly, you know, similar effect, but for yeah. no really good reason outside of the fact that we now have animation of him using We it. now have animation of <laughs> right, parachute. And right. so, uh, to answer your question, uh, there's a web parachute Spider-Man action figure released by Toy Biz. <laughs> Nah. Yeah, I'm I'm looking at it right now. Yep. But it looks like but it looks like they don't make the sh- parachute look like webs. It's red with the like kind of spider uh mm-hmm. webbing like on his outfit versus oh, sure. the yeah. actual web. Yeah. And the weird thing is Which is you, a, a shame. Yeah, with the, yeah, it's weird too because the 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 art on the side of it is web is 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 yes. the web parachute yes, from the animated is. series. It's not the one that you actually get. So Love all right. It. Well, anyway, a toy biz doing doing the lord's work. Um 
So uh, Robbie is cleared of all charges. Um, JJ says, see, Robbie, it wasn't Spider-Man that helped you when you were in trouble. It was me, Jigsaw Jameson. <laughs> Jigsaw uh, Jameson. <laughs> we, we, thank God for you. <laughs> thank God, Jigsaw. You saved the day. And Robbie convinces Peter to continue as Spider-Man. He's saying he's what the, not just this city, but the no. world needs right now. <laughs> <laughs> also, does, um, does yeah. he know? Does he know that? Peter is Spider-Man like that was so leading <laughs> where he's just like you know you should never stop taking pictures of Spider-Man Peter Peter the wink, world wink. needs Spider-Man oh, world, my uh, my <laughs> pension my uh, paycheck needs you to keep taking pictures of Spider-Man <laughs> Sal you're the I feel like you're the expert here in the comics yeah, yeah, does yeah. Robbie know no um no okay because it's really like yeah because uh, it's no. revealed MJ always knew right it, was that oh, the okay. re- reveal with May as well that she always knew? There is a reveal in which May always knew, but then that was retconned out. Great. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then he reveals does. it anyway. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's kind of yeah. like it's kind of like with the new Superman status quo. It's like, no, his identity secret again for two years, and then we'll have him reveal <laughs> it again. <laughs> I love, by the way, we can just really quick that that identity reveal. It's so great because if he does reveal his identity, the person who is being told will have like a stroke. Like yeah. it is, you will become violently ill if you find out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay, yeah. whatever. But yeah, no, this uh, this whole like Robbie thing, they really leaned into it in the movies. I think yes. in this, everyone's just as dumb as a back of rocks. So yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But Robbie's just like, yeah, I like Spider Man and Peter Parker. You guys are great. <laughs> You're right. I think That's I think they... not a thought in my head. Like. <laughs> The the idea I have of Robbie knowing is from the Raimi movies because it is heavily implied that Bill Nunn's Robbie. Yeah, knows. he knows. Yeah, I yes. heard Spider Man was there. Which honestly, they might have taken from the little leading thing they had here in this show because yeah. there's a lot in those movies that they kind of just pull straight out directly of the from the show. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. we've discussed it many times. Yeah, yeah. never yeah. mind the fact that obviously Red's name is on both those projects. There's yes. a lot of pull on either of them. But yes, right. uh, that is exactly, and, and we've established, you know, it's just quicker to watch a bunch of cartoons than it is to read any single comic book. Yes. Uh, yes. But yeah, Robbie. Can't oh, argue oh, with that. Yeah. Everybody's fat in this episode. Is that, can we talk about that? How everyone's like all squished down for some reason. Like it's really apparent to watch the next one immediately after it. But like everyone's just, the animation is just really weird. Like everyone's got huh. like long faces and they're just squished. And I'm like, what the fuck? What what have you done? What happened? Like, what's what's <laughs> going on? What's going on? I will say though, this it feels like they have a, a scooch more money this season than previous. Se- at really? least so far. Well, here's the here's the thing. Here's the thing, and I think we we figured this out too. Is seasons, especially seasons two and three, start off somewhat sane and then yeah. by the end of the season it's just like all bets are off and yes. <laughs> you know 15 characters are showing up for seemingly inexplicable reasons yeah you've got scorpion fighting the vulture and the lizard over the tablet of time or whatever <laughs> um so now we're getting into the secret origin of captain america is it really no it's not is captain america in the thumb for this episode yes he is um damn right because <laughs> i'm not gonna put the fucking cat in the thumb all right um <laughs> Yeah. So this is season four, episode two, Partners in Danger, chapter two, The Cat, which originally (laughs) aired February 8th, 1997. The cat is broken from prison because of his knowledge of Captain America. See, he's in there, kids. Uh, um, I didn't read a single one of these. I was just like, just play the next one. Yes, play the the, So then when when he goes to the (laughs) Captain America shows up, I'm like, what yes oh yep. just wait yeah. just wait until just wait until how they incorporate the super soldier serum stuff into the rest of the season it's crazy yeah. <laughs> it is just yeah. bonkers yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um spidey once again classic season four opening spider-man singing through the swinging through the city it doesn't matter what sort of closure it appears he gets at the end of the previous episode back to square yeah. one the next episode <laughs> oh my god i i'll take his complaining about mary jane over him worried about his mutation disease yes the, the yeah. mutation, disease. About that mutation disease like remember that one season i think it was like last season where he goes oh no like what's going on is my mutation disease flaring up again and i'm like don't even start <laughs> they don't, don't even <laughs> don't even mention it don't even go we had, there we had an we, we had a, a an unstoppable season yes of you 
maybe turning into the man spider. I can't handle it again. Don't do it. Um, Just stop. So he wonders to himself, who can understand this loss? And he decides Felicia, which sure, Peter, that's why you're going to what Felicia. What a horrible <laughs> idea. <laughs> hey, ex, uh, not even ex-girlfriend. Just, yes. just, and, he, and he's, and he's going to do it as Spider-Man. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, Felicia hey there, does have a thing. To be fair, Felicia does have a thing for Spider-Man. Like she, she is does. into Spider-Man. Yeah. He's maybe taking advantage of that a little bit. Yeah. Um, but you know, there's not, uh, there's a little bit of logic there. She lost, she lost Michael Morbius. He's like, Oh, how do, who do I can't talk to a therapist? Yeah. 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 <laughs> she yeah. Knows, I can't she's really into me. <laughs> I yeah. don't have an insurance. I can't, I don't have insurance. I can't afford a therapist. Yeah. And I like the idea like, yeah, Felicia. Yeah. That's why I'm going to her. I'm going to Felicia because she's got that lost. Yeah. That's it. Meanwhile, he's swinging through the city with like a full erection. Like <laughs> I'll go talk to Felicia. Yeah, this is a great idea. My ex-girlfriend. Not, uh, not, not to like segue into just, just, Get into pound town. Yeah. I, 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 I don't think so, man. It's horrible. So uh, Felicia is on a bummer of a date who takes off uh, her, his gloves, which makes Felicia flashback to her father. And I, I'm going to be trigger. candid. I'm going to be candid with y'all. I think Felicia's inter every interaction Felicia has with her dad is creepy. I, it makes me uncomfortable. I don't know. Yeah. What yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Fair. I don't care for it myself. He gives her a signed <laughs> photo of himself, like he's some kind of actor. <laughs> because because in this first thing, we get young young Felicia going up to her dad as he's sneaking in from being the cat, and he's like, mm, "We're both the most comfortable when we're wrapped in the dark blanket of the night." I don't like it, dude. Fucking don't talk don't to your kid that, that way, man. <laughs> don't say that to anyone, much less your child. I don't like it. He does a lot no. of. We'll get. We don't get into this episode. He does a lot of face touching too. I'm not. I just. I, it's, it makes me uncomfortable. I don't like it. Yeah. And uh, he's got a crazy voice, like Daredevil, where it's he, like, what? What are you doing with this guy? Like, he sounds like George Takai. I had to look it up. Like, wait, did they cast George Takai to play the cat? <laughs> It'd be bold, but it's not. It's a different person entirely. But it's it's no, the it's same. Some guy. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. It's, I, no, I I did the same thing. I'm like. Who is this guy? Yes, I've definitely He's heard that so voice. Creepy and I weird. kept wanting to be like, "Oh my, Felicia!" <laughs> <laughs> um, You've grown into quite the woman. Yeah. <laughs> So Felicia comes in with Doc Ock visiting Felicia's mom. The show pretends like we're not supposed to immediately know that's fucking Doc Ock, even though he has orange gloves and he sounds exactly like Doc Ock. But of course, <laughs> it is Doc Ock. And this was another one through this episode. I'm like, why the fuck is Doc Ock here? And the show yeah. sort of justifies it by the end. Yeah, <laughs> sort yeah. of gets there. No, he's he's tacked on. I feel bad. Like, remember, he was like episode three. Yeah. Like, huge, bad, big classic villain now he's relegated to wearing trench coats and coming out of doorways like that that's all he's good for now like <laughs> it is we're weird. drop you out of a plane he's like oh no okay never mind like, it is it. weird that we don't have like a doc ock season like a season where he's the guy behind the curtain yeah yeah i guess pink whatever whatever doc ock would be doing kingpin kind of like that's his goal that's his game well the funny thing is like Doc Ock is so smart that at one point or another, the writers at Spider-Man were like, I, I don't know what to do with this guy. Like six <laughs> limbs. It's lame. Yeah. How about he's also, you know, wait, isn't he smart too? Let's make him <laughs> the master planner. Yeah. Which they like waste the name on as a pseudonym that Tombstone takes against right. the Robbie. It's just like, what? Yeah. And yeah, no, Doc they, Ock is too smart to be wearing trench coats and being like, well, I'm on money. <laughs> yeah, they, they use him. They use him so well in Spectacular Spidey in that role yeah, where yeah. he's just he's overseeing everything. He's the mastermind. Yeah. Yeah. They, they it makes me wish him. that um, the Tinker character in Spider-Man Homecoming had been Ock and had oh, been yeah. a way to see that mm. in, in there. Um, and especially since that, that actor is not the actor I would have chosen for Ock. But if you've seen Severance. He's really good in that. Um, cool, that same right. actor, uh, he plays the brother. I would like the Tinker to be used in anything. Mm -hmm. It was really cool. That movie, Homecoming. Yeah. I'm like, here's here's Shocker, Tinker, or Vulture, and they're just it's kind uh, of there. Just, just throw the, oh, and Scorpion, and here you go. There's four of them. Yeah, and right. they don't do anything. Nope. and whatever. Yeah, yeah. that yeah, way. I'm that okay way. with them being like world building, but like, oh, and Prowler. Yeah, and it's like use them though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys play the uh, Miles Morales game? Yes. Yeah. 
They, I think that was a cool, that was a cool take on the Tinkerer for that game. Between um, Into the Spider Verse and Miles Morales, I both of those make a solid argument that we could, we should just kind of move on from Peter and just do Miles now because it's a way the mm-hmm. Miles Morales game in particular did a good job of like there's moments that are kind of like remixes of classic Peter Parker moments. Like uh, one of right. my favorite moments, light spoilers for the Miles Morales game that came out two years ago, but <laughs> in the final fight where miles goes to like grab tinker it's like a it's it's a slight slight twist on the gwen stacy moment where he grabs yes. and then he flips so it's his back hits and i found it really right. i i actually enjoyed miles the miles morales game more than the spider-man ps4 game oh really yeah uh, yeah i thought it I, it was tighter everything about it was just was just tighter um it was too short for me i wanted more it was short <laughs> but, but, it was short but i do I love both of those games a but, lot. But yeah, no bullshit really good, Taskmaster yeah. missions. None of the stuff I wanted to <laughs> skip. None of the stuff I want. Fair. But I do think we're going to run into the problem. We're getting on a tangent. But you know what? That's another mainstay of this show. Um, I <laughs> don't like the idea of, and we're going to have to deal with it in Spider-Man 2, the video game Spider-Man 2. I don't like the idea of Peter and Miles being operating at the same time. There should be one oh. Spider-Man. Oh, see, I like it. I, I be, I, cause I just, we've seen so many, it's, it's the norm is them operating at different times and like oh, him yes. taking over. So it's like, look, we've got so many different takes. I'm down to see tandem Spideys. I like, I'm into it. I'm even, I'm even down if they did that in the MCU and they brought in, brought in miles and had them, had, had their, them overlap a little bit before mm-hmm. Peter retires. I guess uh, it's, I guess it's my, my, one of my issues with the inclusion of Ned and homecoming as well as I think part of the, for me, a key part of Spider-Man is the fact that he's on his own, that he yeah. can't really count on other, like there's nobody else for him to like, he doesn't have a sidekick or a teammate or whatever. It's basically right. just him. Um, and I think that undercuts it a little. And I, and I also think we've gotten too much into like, cause we can't let go of anything in comics. It's like, there's five flashes running around. There's fucking <laughs> like two to three to four spider people. And it's like, just, Fucking pick the one I'll allow, even though we have way too many, is Green Lanterns. Sure, have two or three Green Lanterns. <laughs> That's fine. Four. Yeah, there's a there's a whole thing. But I think there, now there's like six Green Lanterns, and we've introduced other Lantern colors. Give them have Guy Gardner <laughs> stay a Red Lantern. Like, yeah. let let's let's yeah. farm them out a little bit. Come on, guys. Anyway. Yeah. yeah that's fair. That's just me. Um. So. <laughs> Spidey just stumbles across this. He's there. He's on the way to talk to Felicia when all this is going down. Uh, multiple people comment on it like, hey, why are you here? <laughs> Did you know Doc Ock was here? <laughs> this is one of the few like legitimate times that Spider-Man just shows up out of nowhere and there's a reason for it. Yes. He's like, I am going right. to go and get help from Unlike Felicia Wing. The, the, yeah, exactly. Unlike the spot episode where he just happens to be in the park that has a pawn shop by the park, which is where the guy sells the thing. Like, it's just kind of like, you know, happens. Convenient. Yeah. So, um, Spidey finds a picture after the whole fight. He finds a picture of Felicia's father, the signed picture Sal mentioned earlier. <laughs> and um, let go of it. He keeps carrying it around places. I'm like, Put it down. That's not yours. Uh, uh, <laughs> He's like, I don't know. It's a handsome guy. I'm kind of lonely right now. Maybe I want to keep this picture with me. Who's that? You know, right. who cares? Uh, so Felicia tells Spidey that she heard them um, talking about the, and I think I'm going to pronounce this incorrectly, and I probably spelled it incorrectly, but who cares? It doesn't matter. The Ausback yeah. fortune. There's a fortune. There's some sort of <laughs> yeah. Yes. Wow. That uh, yeah. That doesn't matter. I just that no. doesn't that does not connect to any of what is about to unfold in any. It's probably one of Aviarad's friends. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but it doesn't come up. Um, so <laughs> Felicia says, why do I always fall for mysterious men, men wrapped in the dark blanket of the night, right? As she lifts her dad's picture. Gross. It's gross. <laughs> why? Because that why? dude said that stuff to you on a regular basis. You know? <laughs> oh man. Everybody in this show needs to see a therapist for different reasons. Um, yeah. So Parker, so, yeah. yeah. So so Peter researches the fortune and finds out Felicia's dad is the cat. The cat. The cat. Um, once again, hard to avoid. Uh, also, better utilized in Spectacular Spider-Man. Won't say any more about that. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Love how they do it. Looks so game. good. Yeah. Um, Ock is captured by Kingpin's men, um, who just kind of like get the drop on him. Um, Kingpin, it basically. Uh, sorry, pun not intended, throws his weight around by having Ock dropped out of a plane. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
as motivation to work for him. Um, and it turns out, uh, okay, hold on. It turns out Kingpin had Langdon, a uh, half mutant guy from previous episodes, turn chameleon yes. into yeah. part machine with a la- with a, with a laser. Just he lasered him into a machine, and now he doesn't need the belt anymore to transform. And oh, he's staying. I, it's <laughs> it's so silly how the lengths they go to over explain something that doesn't need to be no right. Like, no, he, he never yeah. had a belt. <laughs> yes. Why did you add the belt if you needed to get rid of it two seasons later? Also, also, not for nothing, you had them as the Sinister Six. You could just be like, he could just say to Ock, oh, yeah, put trackers on you all. Yeah. Every single one of you, I put trackers in you. I know where you are at all times, by the way, <laughs> FYI. Um, yeah. Fuck. Anyway, so, okay, so he lasered Chameleon and Part Machine. Now he doesn't need the belt to transform, and also he can track him. Yeah. Great. That's layer one. Layer layer two is, for some reason, despite these abilities, he's still in shield custody. Uh, and then the next layer is his cellmate, sort of cellmate. They share a, they share a wall. Um, yeah. um, is yes. is the cat. Whew. And we're not even going to get into the way. There's so many more elegant ways to explain why the cat <laughs> knows what he knows than the one they chose. They chose the most <laughs> convoluted explanation yeah. for why the cat's known in here. for his agility he's a good little kid spy because he's very agile he's agile he's a trained <laughs> acrobat his dad was it was was is that a thief or like a magician or something his dad Which, was something oh my god yes it couldn't just be like oh no somebody cracked the formula and the cat stole it and now he's the one that had yeah. nope that's too simple he's got to have no. been there on the a day the graphic memory was there physically also yeah. was like a child spy that was used by the axis powers pretending to be the ally like, <laughs> yes. what uh, what the fuck also i can't um I, I don't know this for sure i'm not an expert in any of this stuff but i'm not sure photographic memory works the way movies and shows would like us to believe it does <laughs> no just click yeah got it got it it's in there yeah. forever <laughs> <laughs> um Anyway, uh, remember the was it was it smart guy Tia Tamiri Maori's little brother? He had a photographic memory because he was Tosh, the smart guy. That's right. Yes, yes, he's a smart guy. Yes, Tosh Maori. As, as as the theme song told us, he is a smart guy. He's a smart guy. <laughs> smart yes. Guy. In case you're wondering, that's actually <laughs> wow. pretty good. That was actually a pretty good <laughs> setup for a for a kid you know? sitcom. Like, hey, he's a kid, yeah. but he's in an older grade. Was he in college? Was that the bit? Uh, he was. I think he was in high school. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, he's yeah. he's. Should be in middle school, but he's in high school, and he's got like an older brother who he's smarter than. And yeah, that is a good. That actually, <laughs> it's is a good. good. It's good. It's better than this. like. Yeah. It's better than yeah. like. It's like what if Doogie Howser, but like could theoretically happen, well, <laughs> like, but, right. but actually relatable. Yeah. yeah, yeah yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, Peter realizes that Fury is um, in old pictures with Hardesky. He does the whole eye patch. Like I know that face, and he draws the eye patch in there. Um, yeah. well, that, that was a long. Oh, that was a that was a long road to get to a very short destination. Like it was just like uh, he's like, well, wait, what about that guy? I'll print out a big picture mm-hmm. and then I'll draw a thing on that. I'm like, how about just that's Nick Fury? I know him anywhere. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, the show loves flashbacks. You could have just flashback to Nick Fury. Yeah. And the, uh, I also would say I don't know what it was about these episodes that reminded me of this. I feel like missed opportunity by not having Kurt Russell play old Nick Fury. Right. Yeah. I really right. I really feel like I kind of I know we used Kurt Russell and Guardians too, but I was kind of secretly hoping that they would reveal that like, you know that like the James Bond uh uh fan theory that it's a code name that you realize yes. Nick Fury is a code name and so there was right. a World War 2 Nick Fury, played by Kurt Russell, didn't have the eye patch. That's our little joke. You have to go watch Snake Plissken <laughs> to see him with the eye patch. And, and then was, same, Samuel was, Jackson is Nick Fury too, essentially, but not not his son, just the next one with the code name. <laughs> right, right. right. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, you know, I mean, I would have loved to see Kurt Russell back with that with that eye patch, you know. See, I, yeah. I love love escape. I just movie. want Yeah, I want another escape movie just in general. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I think we can get away with another one. I think I think yeah. Snake Plissken's the kind of person who should be like 70 years Where old. where <laughs> like, should he escape from next though? That's I right. wasn't, Moon. Wasn't it supposed yeah. to be Escape from Earth? Wasn't that supposed to be the third one that never came to fruition uh, I mean, or something? I hope they, so. They did that weird thing. And that was John Carpenter who did a Rodriguez because remember in Once Upon a Time in Mexico, how there's a secret Desperado movie they didn't make that they keep flashing back to. (laughs) It didn't actually happen. Well, 
John Carver did it first back with the uh, escape from LA and how in between there, there was a, there was an escape from Cleveland movie. We never saw. Love it. I don't, I've never, I do not remember. Uh, I think I've seen bits of escape from LA. I've never well, gone out and sought it out. <laughs> it is. No, it's, it's worth seeing. It's just really very terrible. But even then, yeah. like you watch escape from New York and it's like, this is, this is terrible too like it's yeah it's all really bad but it's escape, just fun bad i feel like escape from new york's a little more fun escape from, it feels like escape from la kind of just does the same beats as escape from new york but in la yes. and it just does them worse they do <laughs> so, yeah no it's, it's yeah with with more lights yeah like it's, it's yes. easier to see what happens in la than new york and it's like new york <laughs> is kind of like fun and grungy and you're like oh yeah no you didn't shoot any of this in new york that's fun yeah and I, la is like no you definitely shot this in la <laughs> i also feel like i love escape from new york i also feel like it's it's the type of movie that you could reboot in a way with like a different tone and and you could make it different enough that it would make sense like take the premise the premise is still great but let's just change the tone a little bit and i think it lends itself to a good remake let me give you a pitch on that one i'd like to see them reboot escape from new york starring kurt russell directed by john carpenter Cool. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Twenty twenty three. Cool. Escape from yeah. do the same movie. Yes. With those two guys, do it again. I'm yes. In. I'm. I'm in. I think it would be completely different. One hundred percent. It one hundred percent would be. Oh man, Kurt Russell could still fucking do it. He could still bring it. Um, I watched all those Santa Claus movies because I love Kurt Russell so much. He's so good. <laughs> the Netflix uh, Santa Claus movies. God fucking damn. Yeah. It. I was like, you know what? He's great. These, yep. these movies are freaking dog shit. Yeah. Like, he is hot, hot Santa. What's it? Yeah, yeah. 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 Hot Santa. Hot Santa. <laughs> oh yeah. man. Yeah. All right. Only so Hans, Mrs. Claus is great. <laughs> so, uh, uh, he realizes, uh, Nick Fury's in the picture and he remembers, um, you know, it's moments like this where like the sh- show remembers its continuity enough that you're like, man, Selective. yeah, you, this show could be better. It's there. It's like, you guys kind of <laughs> get it. Like, so he remembers, yes. whew, he remembers that JJ got a pin from Fury in the previous episodes. He then discovers <laughs> that JJ had the pin framed. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. And it's something it's JJ funny. would do. It's something JJ yeah. would do. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. That's Here's, great. Here's yeah. the thing that that I have a little trouble with. So this pen, correct me if I'm remembering incorrectly, was in case of emergency, JJ could call help. Yeah. And Spider Man yeah. uses it, and they come in guns apl- like no questions asked, guns <laughs> out. <and start> shooting. <laughs> yeah. I assume it's wired for sound; they can hear. Yeah. Who's talk- And he's always talking to himself, so they know. That's not a jigsaw. <laughs> <laughs> my old, yeah, my, my, my old, old pal Jigsaw oh Jameson. God. Um, uh, I just thought about, uh, you all remember the arcade Punisher game where you could also play as Nick Fury? Yes. Oh yeah. What if another playable character was Jigsaw Jameson just going with a Tommy <laughs> gun? <laughs> oh my God. I'm in. Sounds great. Sold. Um, so, uh, they come in, they, they wrap Sp- uh, Spidey up with like this glue ball. Uh, yep. it's just glue a ball yeah. with his heads and arms and legs sticking Puffs out. Up. Yep. It's a good anti Spider Man device, honestly. It, it works. Yeah. It works. Yeah. <laughs> they they were more effective uh, against him than pretty much any villain he's ever faced. Than Venom. <laughs> uh, yeah, than Venom. Um so uh meanwhile, so they basically roll Spider Man in and Fury's like, Hey <laughs> hey man, what's up? Like nothing ha- like like this wasn't like like they didn't just like attack assault humiliating. Him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's humiliating. They so roll him in and he's like, Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so Fury leaves for some reason I don't remember and he's left with the agent that in my head the red-headed agent that in my head canon is Black Widow uh, has to be yeah yeah, it was Johnny, I think she has a name too. Yeah. And they, it's Agent it, it, Thirteen it or something. Yeah, it's it's yeah. Agent Thirteen. Who's another character? Yeah. So so uh, Johnny, it, just so you can we can you can catch up on some of the headcanon. Redheaded Agent has to be Black Widow. There's also a doctor we keep showing, like this beautiful blonde doctor that sound right. I think is Donald Blake, the civilian identity of Thor. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, and they're like, we can't use them, but we can't use them. Use them. Yeah, because yeah. they do like they connect so much to the Marvel universe at large. It would, yeah. it feels like obviously the that's what they intend to do is like yeah. make all these connections. That I guess there's, there's some they just can't do like legally. Is that it? Or yeah, is it, yeah, yeah. Because they do it occasionally. Like I remember in the X Men animated series, or at least the, the explanation for X Men, um, they would go, "We're not allowed to use like we weren't allowed to use a bunch of characters." So we would just put them in anyway and not refer to them by name. Yeah, right. And so like Deadpool's in the show and they were like, you can't use, you 
for whatever reason, they were told you can't use Deadpool. Yeah. And they went, Weird. okay, well, then we will never just say he's Deadpool. And the people who are watching and the showrunners have no idea who any of these characters are anyway. Mm-hmm. Yes. No, so we'll just right. put it in and hope for the best. And that, they did. That, that is my theory with a lot of this stuff is that somewhere along the production line knew, but nobody else, like somebody, one of the animators was like, well, let's make a redhead Black Widow. And nobody else knew like it didn't get back to, call, to anybody to else. Call bullshit. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. No, in the X Men cartoon, I remember there's a scene where, like, I think it's during the Phoenix Saga, Spider Man mm-hmm. shows up <laughs> and he's completely in shadow. He only sees his, his hand in the web and it catches a thing that saves a, a, a passerby. It's part of like a montage of characters. And I, I think I've I, this is maybe like just just kind of the, the passage of time and my, the withering of my brain. But yeah. I remember them saying, "Oh, that's not Spider Man. That's <laughs> that that's that's Scarlet Spider." Like they were allowed to use other characters, but not some. Ca- they're like, oh no, that's not Spider Man. That's Ben Riley. Well, no, I know. Hold on, hold like, on. Now no. I gotta look this up because I know some. I, I want maybe it was the Fantastic Four. Scarlet Spider shows up, shows up in a place instead of Spider Man for whatever reason. Animated. Okay, hold on, hold on, sense, hold on. Because the Fantastic Four used everybody. Like that one was just shameless. Where they're like, uh, they're fighting Galactus. How about Ghost Rider shows up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it takes Galactus out in one hit. <laughs> I love it. It's something that has not yet been done in the comics. And I'm like, how did they beat you to this? Okay, hold on. So dope. Hold on, hold on. You know what? We don't have time for me to uh, to, to sort this shocked out. They, I'm kind of yeah. shocked they don't bring Scarlet Spider into this show. <laughs> it right. feels like, yeah. I oh, he's just, there. Oh, don't worry. Well, you know he's here. Like, he's coming. <laughs> <laughs> he's coming. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. I forgot how I forgot about how they did it, but it's, yeah. it's just interesting they didn't do it like more strictly based on the actual uh, the comic book yeah. because this is like around the time that that's happening, right? Exactly. That's the thing is it's just, it's just too fresh. They like they're right. like yeah no it's, right. it's literally happening in the comic books right now and right where I mean they yeah like they had just ended the Clone Saga when they put him in the show and they're like right. that's why one of the they, episodes is called I really really hate clones. That's it's right. Just a, it's just a wink and a nod, like, yeah, yeah right. We all hate that. the clone saga. And I'm like, you spent two long years in it. Don't they pretend really, like you weren't doing it. Yeah. They did that really, they did that really brief and quick, like, uh, like, uh, just, they just run down the whole clone saga in like one monologue in that, they do. In that episode. Yeah. 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 You know uh, that guy, Miles Warren, he didn't really do anything. Well, guess what? He did this, this, this. Yeah. This, right. right. Okay. Like, so, episode 54 of X Men, One Man's Worth. Bishop yeah. and Shard recruit Wolverine and Storm to stop yet another Nightmare's Future, but doing so ends the X-Men relationship. So Scarlet Spider makes a cameo in that, apparently with the Avengers. Uh, if I'm incorrect, I'm reading stuff real quick. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And I want to say... Uh, I don't know. I want to say there's a fanta- he shows up in the Fantastic Four animated series as well. For, and it's one of those, like, why not have... Why Scarlet Spider, not Spider-Man? Yeah, and I think it's because they right. were like, well, you can't use him. Yeah. And it's like, fine. Hold Weird. on. I will say I do love I love the Scarlet Spider's costume. It's one of my favorites. <laughs> I'm a fan. <laughs> it's a song. I'll do. I'll I'll, I'll one up you. My favorite Spider-Man costume is Ben when Ben Riley is Spider-Man. That is my that, right, the, that, the, yeah. the sensational yeah. Spider-Man suit. Yes, like the one with the big spider and yep. the. The, the webs on the outsides and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That, mm-hmm. I, I really like it. And maybe it is because I'm a child of the 90s, but I really like <laughs> right. that. I really like that suit. And then to punish me, um, <laughs> uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe used it in that god off, used parts of it in that god awful Iron, Sp- Iron Spider suit. So it's like, hey, you think you like yeah. this? Fuck you, kid. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. You we're going to make it suck. We're going <laughs> to <we're gonna> make <laughs> it awful. And it looks like I he did-, did show up in, uh, makes a brief cameo uh, as Johnny Storm and Rick Jones. Oh, took the air cycle for a quick spin around the city. Okay. S- Scarlet Spider making the rounds. He does have, and it makes sense because yes. he does have a cool looking suit. He does have a cool looking he suit. He is. He is Scarlet Spider. He's wearing a hoodie and everything. Yep. I remember that vividly. Like he's under the thing. And yep. it's like, what the? You no! do remember it vi- vividly because that's what came up. That's what came up when I looked it up. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Well, there uh, goes my grandpa. I don't remember anything about him. <laughs> he's gone. He's that. gone now. But fortunately, I was able to pull Scarlet Spider. All right. I've got the lyrics of the snorks up here. <laughs> <laughs> so um uh anyway so spidey escapes black widow um he looks up <laughs> he looks up uh info on hardesky who's the cat that we've been mentioning um and the, he, he, while he's looking up stuff he like webs up uh agent 13 black widow whatever and she just lays there motionless 
Like yeah. she's dead. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, well, well, she's just so embarrassed. <laughs> exactly. I've just got to lay here. She play, Every S.H.I.E.L.D. agent is taught to play possum. When you're, when you're yeah. subdued, you're like, well, maybe if I just play it, then I'm dead. They'll leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. Because every assailant is a bear. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which, by the way, I think don't do that with bears. I think is what we. There are certain bears you can do that with. Uh, yeah, you no. have to. You have to be really good at identifying bears. Yes. <laughs> yes. If you want to survive. Well, thankfully, <laughs> thankfully, most of them are brown or black. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I can tell the difference between a, a grizzly bear is the biggest, uh, scariest bear I can imagine. Yes. And the others are black bears. Yes. Like you run into a you run into a polar bear, you're like, oh my god, what do I do? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 yeah you die yeah seriously have you have you guys seen those videos of like grizzly bears fighting two grizzly bears fighting no, no. that sounds horrifying it's intense it's one of it's one of those that it's like they, they hit each other and you feel it in your bones you're like oh my god like, oh my god if they hit me my bones would shatter yes. i'd be dead yeah no and it's true they'll, cr- they'll crush your head like a watermelon at yeah. the Gallagher concert like, yes yes <laughs> um uh, okay, so chameleon. Uh, so the master plan here, and I and I love that when they come up, Kingpin is like, "I hope you appreciate the, the genius of my plan," which is that he attacks the helicarrier while the guards are distracted. Chameleon, who I get, so a couple things here. I guess they Shield does not know that he doesn't need the belt anymore, and also they are so confident in that fact they did not feel the need to brief any of their agents that what Chameleon's <laughs> deal is. Like, by nope. the way, if you see Nick Fury or Agent Thirteen or your mom or yourself in this cell, <laughs> it is probably the Chameleon. Do not open the cell. Yeah. No, it's just like we put Chameleon in cell 53. Yeah. 53 is his number. Yeah. If anybody's in 53 and it doesn't look like Chameleon, it is. Yeah. End of story. End of story. If you see, I, if, if you see, if you see somebody like Fury in there and the Chameleon is also in there, run it up the food chain and get somebody <laughs> else to, but don't, whatever you do, don't just open the fucking cell. The Chameleon is no. in that cell. <laughs> nope. No. Nope. Pretty, nope. pretty incompetent, honestly. Yeah. How do they, yeah. how do yeah. they keep, they keep, How do they keep that fortress in the sky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Chameleon Princess be Fury, he gets let out. Um, and he's like, somebody talking to the cat, he's like, somebody went through a lot of trouble to spring you, and it wasn't because of your charm. And I do like this line. The cat's response is he kicks the chameleon and he's like, How about my talent? And then he escapes. I did like that little Ugh. zinger. Um, so fake fury shoots Spidey off of the helicarrier (laughs) and so that he can once again, uh, bust out his patented web parachute. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Um, chameleon stays behind as the fake cat. I feels like they figured this out immediately. Um, (laughs) and so I guess the, the assumption is that they think chameleon escaped and not the cat which is better somehow, even though if Chameleon escaped, he would go to the same place the cat is going. So anyway, um, uh, we find out. So this is, this is where we find out about Hardesky slash Captain America's secret origin. We find out Uh, that not only was young Hardesky a trained acrobat, uh, he also has a photographic memory. We learned later that um, he's the son of the great Hardesky. A lot of backstory for one cat burglar <laughs> yeah yeah um so he spied on the creation of captain america as a kid we find out uh, we, we so basically this is our way of seeing the whole captain america origin uh weird note yeah. did either of you notice that i don't think he's mentioned by name but professor erskine the guy that creates captain america does he have a southern accent does he sound like colonel yeah, sanders he does not sound german i'll tell you that like there's no one i'm like i'm trying to identify everybody in there and i'm like okay so we're not doing i mean he he he, he wades into a hot tub of the solution like it's yeah right. so all bets are off it's a, it sounds like there's fucking, so many vats of, of fluid in these sh- these old yes. 90s shows. <laughs> yes, <true. laughs> yeah. yeah there's no osha no oversight you just want vats of chemicals <laughs> hanging open fine no big deal uh right. yeah so i he, ju- he just sounds like daniel craig in a knives out movie it's just like by the way <laughs> captain america oh. yeah it's really weird so, I also love that they just immediately had the costume ready. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, he Good he to go. gets out of the vat and like, here, please put this on. Yeah. Someone <laughs> needs to take a contextless sequence where he, because he puts his shirt on first. So there's a scene mm-hmm. that you can take a still of, of Captain America with his shirt on, putting his pants Wait. on one leg at a time. And it's, 
I really, think, it's really humiliating. This is one of those moments where I do think like, and I have criticisms of the MCU overall. If you have like a billion movies, who, how would you not have criticisms? But I sure. do think as we talk about it, this is one of the things that I think made them so successful because they were able to look at Captain America and they would be like, that costume is fucking silly, but yes. we're going to do it. Like we're going right. to, not only, obviously we're going to update it, but we're going to actually yeah. have him in the fucking almost as a way and then i think this was smart because because i think one thing that does help the mcu especially early mcu is despite their kind of sarcastic nature for the most part they're not like they don't ne never look down at the source material no no it's it, you can feel that in even in the netflix shows like anything that's not under the marvel studios banner yeah is like a kind of all it's either on, on dc's warner brothers end it's an apology mm -hmm. sorry we ran out of <laughs> harry potter's we have to make this i'm so sorry <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> I promise that the character that is the main the name of the show won't be in it very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, don't don't worry. But like, yeah, I'm sorry. But even Netflix, they were like, like the sequence where Luke Cage is wearing his Luke Cage outfit, yes. and he goes, "I look like a fucking asshole," and yeah. then just rips it all off. I'm like, really? Like, <laughs> but it, it, you, the the Captain America thing is so perfect because Joe Johnson, director of The Rocketeer, yes, and the time period. It's like you know what? That's the best they can make. This is what it would look like. <laughs> Dude, I found out apparently um, uh, when they were making the What If animated series, the showrunners pitched like, let's yeah. have a Captain America Rocketeer team up as, oh, as one yes. of the episodes. And Kevin Feige yeah. was like, no. And I'm like, why? But why? Why? <laughs> why? Yeah. why would you do that? Do it. Right? I, now Now, what I want to see is I want to see now that we have Namor, I guess the only one we're missing, missing is uh, Torch. Andrew, uh, Android Human Torch. Do yes. a fucking what if and oh, put the yeah. Rocketeer in that one. Come on. <laughs> the Android Human Torch appeared in the Stark Expo. Yeah, at Captain, in Captain America. He did. In Captain America. So but, it's like. Yes, it's there. Right. Yeah, going back full circle, I do think, and, and I do think having it as part of the USO show without anybody commenting on was a way, like, see, guys, this is why we have to change the costume because it looks fucking, it looks dumb. Silly. But yeah, I, I last note on the, I've thought a lot about Captain America's costume. I <laughs> do think it was a little bit of a mistake. I think the best version in that first movie is the one that's the, when he goes to say Bucky, that's the USO sh uh, uniform with the jacket over it. Yeah, because yeah, I think I like the, that. The, the final one's too bulky. It's too chunky. It's a little bulky. Yeah, yeah. I um I always liked the uh, what they did in the in the flashback stuff from the Ultimates comic, where it like looks it looks like a yeah. soldier's uniform yes. with mm. the with the accents. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I and I and and I think the we the the perfect movie version of it was an end game where it's like you got the scales, you got the like yeah. Yeah. it's it was we finally like perfected it for the last one. Yeah, great. Yeah. Um, and it gives me hope. Listen, I know Sam Wilson's cap costume in the show is comics accurate. I also think the comics version looks bad. I don't think it looks good. And so I'm <laughs> we did it. We did it. Good yep. job, everybody. We did it. Mm -hmm. Now let's maybe give him a costume that looks less like a palette swap falcon and looks more like Captain America. <laughs> Um, it, it, it's it's weak when he's walking when he's when he's standing talking to people yeah with those big ass goggles i'm mm -hmm. like it's rough yeah, yeah I, I think I, I like it maybe the color scheme i like the white focused color scheme i say keep that but have it yeah. more like a traditional captain america and then i say we upgrade red wing so that yeah. his wings are detachable so that when he's on the ground mm. he's running around like captain america and a push comes to shove red wing comes down picks him up and now because i just think the wings it's just too it again it's too much it's a lot if he's the Falcon, he's the Falcon. Great. If he's Captain America, he's Captain America. Great. But nobody's w talking about Iron Spider Spider Man as if he's Iron Man. He's Spider Man. No. So you're not. <laughs> if, if if he's flying around with wings, he's still the fucking Falcon, just with Captain America's shield. You know what I mean? Like pick. In, yeah. in my opinion, pick a lane. Anyway. Uh, in my opinion, if you can fly, I'm never giving that up. Like <laughs> yeah, I mean yeah, I fucking get it. But I also I think the show did a good job of convincing me of Sam Wilson's Captain America. Yes. But I didn't like the idea like. From the the idea of Falcon being a downgrade, like the Falcon yeah. in my mind was never a sidekick. I know technically he was, but like the yeah. idea of saying like, "Well, Sam Wilson hasn't made it until he's Captain America." It's like, well, that's kind of bullshit. That kind of is underselling him as Falcon. Yeah, yeah, I no. agree. Yeah, Falcon was an I, Avenger. Like he's fine. Also, yeah, not for nothing. I think Bucky Cap is probably the most interesting Cap. 
in my opinion. And and that's the what if I really want. It's like, okay, I, you guys convinced he'll, me. He'll of probably Sam, do that at some point. Yeah, you guys yeah. convinced me of Sam Wilson cap. I think you'd have made a good argument for it. I think in the MCU it makes more sense than than Bucky than Bucky Cap would. But at least give me yeah. a what if. I want a what right. if Bucky Cap. Gimme, gimme. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. That's enough Captain America talk to warrant him being in the thumb. You're welcome, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, man. So, uh, as Sal mentioned earlier, oh, my God. It turns out Hardesky was hired by Nazis pretending to be allies, trying to get the super soldier <sighs> fucking serum. He should have just been adult thief Hardesky and just found the formula. That would have been so much easier. Yeah. Yeah, they wanted they wanted him to like they wanted to connect him directly to Captain America himself. He wanted to see the birth of Captain America, yeah. which I don't understand. Which don't that know. doesn't even I, pay off like, this season. Does, does it? Spider Man doesn't meet Captain America until it, season five, right? It and it barely yeah. and it barely connects to this at all. This is just seeing his origin, and then like yeah, I think I think you see him in their uh, in their Secret Wars take. I think yeah. that's it. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's wild, it. Yeah. wild, <laughs> yeah. weird. Playing yeah. the long game here. Um, <laughs> So uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. took Hardesky to keep the formula out of the wrong hands, which is, uh, we use that a lot in fiction. It's a little, it's a tricky, (laughs) who are the wrong hands? Are S.H.I.E.L.D. the right hands? Not so sure. (laughs) Um, Yeah, they're they're the, they're the bad guys the entire episode. So I don't see how that's. They are the bad guys. (laughs) Um, Anyway, uh, we needed this out of the uh, wrong hands. Who are the right hands? The American government. Ooh, some <laughs> notes there. I got some notes on that one. Uh-huh. So, um, Ock kidnaps Felicia, which finally justifies Ock being in this episode. And this is to use her as leverage against her father. And that is where we end uh, this episode of Spider Versity. Oh my goodness! What a what a journey, everybody. Uh, Johnny, any yeah. final thoughts on these last two on these two episodes we just covered? Um, I'm glad you guys had me on for the Jigsaw Jameson episode. Yes. that's that's big. That's big for me. Yeah. Really excited. <laughs> um, no, but I'm also like I'm I'm eager to listen to what you guys think of this season in general because the the direction they go. So like I I think I'm sure you know this is like kind of the black cat season. Yes. And the um the her the way they mold her origin is batshit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I don't I don't know how they got there, but I actually quite like the dynamic she has with Spidey in this season. Like it's I don't know, it's kind of fun. They're wildly horny. It's crazy. Yes. <laughs> like yeah. and, yes. and uh I really appreciated kind of their dynamic in this season. So I'm eager to eager to hear what you guys think as you go through it. <laughs> maybe maybe if you're free, maybe you can circle back for the the end of the se- last episodes of the I would, season. I would yeah. love that. That sounds great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for me and we'll talk about it more in in future episodes, but it, this what the season was a reminder of me like, yeah, I'm a big black cat fan. Like I remember I flashback all the way to the 90s it's like, yeah, I know I know she has a, her own run right now, but it's like, oh, yeah, we're not using black cat enough. Black cat's a winner. <laughs> yeah, no, I <laughs> totally. Agree. I agree. I've like over, over most of watching a bunch of Spider-Man shows and and uh playing the game, I've kind of become a a Peter <laughs> black cat shipper. I'm yeah. like, oh, yeah. they're they're the most fun. Yes. <laughs> they, yeah, have the most fun dynamic. Yeah. Well, and I think the the story I remember hearing is that the reason Gwen Stacy got killed off was that they had more fun writing Mary Jane than Gwen Stacy. That's right. And it's like, but what about yeah. Black Cat? But Black Cat <laughs> yeah. seems she the most fun at all. <laughs> she seems the most fun of all. Yeah. Right. Well, that's and that's funny that they weren't like, well, she's more fun. Kill Mary Jane. Let's They're, move on. <laughs> <laughs> We're just gonna fridge every love interest we don't want to write anymore. She just they're going right <laughs> out the window. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God. Uh, Sal, any final thoughts? This this is not the most. I I, I was sort of on board <laughs> as we went go, went through here, but yeah. the next two. <laughs> oh wow! You know what? I think it sounds like next episode you and I are gonna have some different opinions. I, 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 I we'll see. There, uh, there's some good stuff, like in the in the black cat, but yeah. Yeah, Cra- Craven. The Craven return is a little <laughs> that one is clunky. That yes. was like a car with with square wheels. Yeah, oh, yeah. All right, <laughs> that's it for this episode. Uh, Johnny, remind the kids at home where they can find you. 
Yeah, check out my YouTube channel, Johnny Two Cellos on YouTube. I'm also on Twitter at Johnny Two Cellos. I also have a podcast where I talk about adult animated shows. We usually do it like a season at a time called Cartoons That Curse. You can check that out on <laughs> podcast platforms or on YouTube. We have a video version on there. Uh, yeah, that's it. And I want to say you might have done an episode or two uh, based on your Twitter feed on BoJack Horseman. I want to say maybe one or two... <laughs> Maybe one or two. On it's like, character. honestly, the reason that I can make a living talking about cartoons is because that show, yeah. that show like really, <laughs> really foisted my channel to a level where I could, I could actually get people to watch me. And uh, even three years after it's ended, people tune in every time I talk about it, which is, which is cool. So I owe that show a lot. I also quite like it. I think it's a good show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never had a chance <laughs> to check it out. One of these days I'll get there. I'll, Worth it. I'll really get, good. I'll get, really I'll good. get on it. How many seasons? Uh, six seasons. It's about 77 episodes. Or that's so. not too bad. Yeah. Again, There's one yeah. special that's not in there, which you can kind of skip. It's like a Christmas special. But all right. it's not all right, really. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Like I kind of it's easier to catch up on shows now as opposed to like, don't worry, it was 15 seasons, 24 episodes a season. It's like, well, that's yes. not happening. Is that's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Uh, Bojack's it's like 12 episodes a season. Pretty easy. Pretty easy to binge. So, yeah. Love it. Sal, where can the kids find you? Uh, come on by youtube.com slash comic pop or at comic pop. I don't know, but uh, we're, <laughs> we're comic pop. Check us out. You'll like it. <laughs> Check it out. Links in the description as always. And we will see you all next time. Oh, wait for me. Wait, hold on. I've got things too. wait. First off, uh, uh, <laughs> this episode, we're actually going to put this episode. Uh, it's on the Patreon first, but then it's going to go on as, as one of the, the main podcast episodes. So if you're like, Oh, spider versity, what is this? I like this. Go to patreoncom slash only stupid answers. We've done every, literally every Spider-Man movie, even the ones that don't have him in it. Uh, Morbius and Venom. Uh, we we're obviously on the season four of Spider-Man: The Animated Series. If you want to hear Sal and I discuss all of it, that's where you're gonna go. Um, also, again, can't stress this enough: Hellbent Volume Three, the final chapter of the Hellbent Saga. If you want to catch up, if you want to finish it up, you can do. You can sign up at the pre-launch page at hellbentcomicbook.com. And you can find me everywhere that matters at DJ Talks Trash. We'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody.